Welcome back to AMD Tuition. I am the head tutor of AMG Tuition and I'm also a dental student. We have collated all of the past papers and researched all of them and gone through them and made three predictions of what we think will come up on this year's GCSE chemistry paper. This is a series of these types of videos, so if you wanna stay up to date and watch more of these videos, then make sure to like and subscribe. The first topic that we think is very likely to come up in this year's paper is electrolysis. Electrolysis means splitting up with electricity. Make sure that you're able to draw and label a rough diagram representing electrolysis like the one that's on the screen now and also that you're up to date with the process of electrolysis and I'll leave the process on the screen here for you to screenshot it or make a note of it and also save this video because you're going to want to come back to this like a day or two before your exam to just touch up on these topics. And a key one mark question around electrolysis that could be asked is why reduction can't be done with carbon. And if this was to come up, you'd simply write down that aluminium is more reactive than carbon. And what I want you to let me know in the comments is why specifically aluminium? Why have I mentioned aluminium here as the metal that is more reactive than carbon? So go to the comments to find out why. Another question that could come up as a one or a two mark question is asking you why cryolite is added to aluminium oxide. So let's assume this is a two mark question and make a note of what I'm going to say here now. The first mark what I would put down for this is that cryolite lowers the melting point of the electrolyte. And secondly, this decreases the cost of extraction as less energy is required. And I know in school in general, a lot of you students are wondering why do you have to learn certain things? How is it going to be relevant in real life? The reason in this question why we're talking about cost is because the reason cost is so important is that companies want to produce things on a mass scale and the lower that the cost can be, the more of these they can produce in a shorter time period. So it's more cost efficient and they can also be more productive with their materials. I'm even going to give you a bonus question with this topic. So I'm going to ask you, why doesn't electrolysis always have 100% yield? So I'll pause the video here, have a think of two or three points and I'll give you the two points just here. For this question, the first point I would put that the loss of product in separation from the reaction mixture could be your first mark. The second mark could be that there could be a side reaction. And if it was a three mark question, for example, you could also add that the reaction may not go to completion. My second prediction for this paper is I think they will ask you something about graphite and diamonds. And more specifically, I think they may ask you to compare them in a three, a four or a six mark question. So let's assume the worst case scenario, let's assume it's a six mark question where you need a lot more points. Make a note of all these points that I'm going to mention now. So the first one I would say about diamond is that each carbon in diamond forms four strong covalent bonds, whereas in graphite, each carbon atom in graphite forms three strong covalent bonds, and this is with three other carbon atoms. In terms of hardness, diamond is the hardest known natural material due to its strong covalent bonds. And graphite is relatively soft and slippery due to its layered structure. In terms of electrical conductivity, diamond can't conduct electricity because it has no delocalized electrons. And in terms of graphite, one electron from each carbon atom is delocalized. This makes it free to move through the structure and carry a charge. And this means that graphite is a good conductor of electricity. In terms of melting and boiling points, if we're talking about diamond, it has a high melting point. This is because it's hard and it needs so much energy to overcome these strong covalent bonds. In terms of graphite, this has a lower melting point. This is because it's soft from the layers that form in the graphite, which have weak intermolecular forces between them. And this means that it doesn't take much energy to overcome these forces, whereas in diamond, it takes a lot of energy. These are just a few points I've made about graphite and diamond. There are so many more you could go with. If you run out of ideas from your revision guide or your study books or your class notes that you can put for this sort of question, just do a simple Google search or chat GPT search and you'll have a lot more points about this. Our third prediction for this paper is that I think a titration related question will come up. In our last chemistry video, which went over the hardest six mock GCSE chemistry questions that could come up, we went over a more detailed and a different type of question to what we're going to go over now. So make sure you go over that video as well. And I'll link that in the top corner of this video and in the video description. But there is definitely potential for a six mock question to come up about titration and them to just directly ask you to summarize or explain the process of a titration. So let's just go through some of the key steps that could be written down for a question like this. Number one, I would say something about measuring the hydrochloric acid using a pipette and the usual kind of measurement for this is 25 centimeters cubed. Then add it to the conical flask, add a few drops of indicator to it. 
use a burette to add sodium hydroxide to the acid and make sure that this is drop by drop because remember in a question like this how they're going to differentiate between the top students and the good students is the ones that are very specific in their answer and the reason why you want to do drop by drop is you want to know the exact drop that causes the color change so that your measurements are as accurate as possible the next point i would put is that make sure to observe the color change via the indicator Record the volume because that's a key aspect to make sure you're accurate and precise with your scientific method. Repeat this several times until you have concordant results and calculate a mean. Let me know in the comments if you think there's any other types of topics or questions that could come up and maybe I'll go over this in a part two. I'm also going to make the physics version of this and I've already made the biology version so make sure you like and subscribe to see more of this and also just let me know if you want to see more of this content if you're finding it useful. If you want to book a free one-to-one -one taster lesson with my team of tutors then the link is in the video description and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.